Okay, I'll be right there. All right, I'm coming. You're coming? Yep. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're reviewing the titanium spool gun for MIG welding aluminum from Harbor Freight. I picked this up a few months back along with their MIG 170 dual voltage uh, MIG welder to have a backup around the shop. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed, but we're gonna take a look at uh, how this actually runs. I ran a bunch of 1 8 inch plate, broke some of the welds apart to see how structurally sound they are, ran some thin stuff, 16 gauge, all the way up to maxing it out on some quarter inch thick plate. If you want to learn how to MIG weld aluminum, I've got the video for you linked in the description as well as other videos with MIG welding basics. Let's get started. Let's just take a look around here at the overall construction of it. It's pretty standard uh, around here with the spool sitting on the back and a feed mechanism. Uh, now as far as connecting it goes, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's nice you've got the DINs cables here, kind of that European style where I can connect the positive over to uh, my lead. And then I've got to put a lug in here and tighten it down in place of the original gun. And then here for the gas connection, it's a quick connector rather than going through that lug, which kind of makes me wonder why they didn't just put a DINs connector to connect it directly onto those terminals going through the lug. But either way, it's not too bad to hook up. Pretty simple than the connector hooks right in there at the bottom for your trigger and your feed motor and you're ready to go. Now before installing the wire you just need to make sure that you're using the proper drive roll and so see how it says 0.9 millimeters or uh, 0.35 or 35 thousandths of an inch and it has a U on it because this drive roll is a U shaped roll which is best for soft wires like aluminum. So you want that showing on the outside um, for whatever wire size you're going to load in. I'm going to be using a 35 thousandths of an inch or 0.9 millimeter wire here. So you need to open the catch there on the drive roll tensioner and then trim the wire off to feed through and I'll slide it right in. Um, this is pretty, uh, pretty standard on most spool guns, nothing too, too different here. And then as I slide it through, I just use my finger to guide it into that forward sleeve and I'll install the wire, roll it to pull the, the slack out while I keep a finger on there. And then there's a washer and a nut that retains it and there's a little flat on those um, to keep the nut from coming loose as the wire spins around. And then I'll go ahead and close the lid, um, put on my drive roll tensioner and I should be I'm ready to close it up. Now the tension for the drive roll is adjustable out here so you can fine tune that in. Um, there you could either use a wood block to run it against or uh, just um, you know to get a general idea. But I'm feeding the wire out and the liner came with it a little bit which uh, I don't think is too big of a deal. It seems like the contact tip retains that liner in there. Um, so I'd remove the contact tip so the wire can feed out. Then I'll go ahead and thread this contact tip in. And it's nice that these are just the standard, you know, Tweeko style contact tips. You can get them right at Harbor Freight that they have for their other guns. There's, there's nothing special about it. I have another spool gun where you have to get these special little contact tips and it's kind of a hassle. So, so this is nice. And then I'll go ahead and put my nozzle on and I should be pretty well ready to go. Um, now let's take a, just an overall look at the ergonomics here holding it. There is a nice spring strain relief there which, which helps out a little bit. And then you know, look at the plastic on that case there. I think if anything's going to break it's probably going to be that. So I'm going to be careful not to drop it off my table um, there. There's also a hook you can hang it up on the wall if you want. Notice that it's spinning slowly and then speeds up as you go along. So this has some circuitry in the machine here on the MiG-170 that starts off slow and speeds up. But as soon as it makes contact, it seems to speed up during welding. So looking at the chart, I need to set it to 375 inches a minute and 20 volts is their starting point. Now usually I will adjust it and honestly when I'm running aluminum, um, I usually run a little bit low on the voltage to get started. But I'm going to start off with their recommendation and just see how it goes. Uh, if you watch my aluminum basics video, you, you know the reason I start off low is because that will keep it from burning back. Now you can see right there it, it's running okay, but I, I'm going to make a few adjustments. So I, I ran a couple of test welds and ended up landing a little bit lower. It was running just a little bit hot for this 1 8 inch thick material. And so I, I'm going to turn it down a little bit both on the wire feed speed and the voltage and see if that runs a little better. And yeah, it's getting given a, a pretty good result there. So I'll go ahead and tack this up here 
And as I put those tacks, you'll notice I start pretty far back just to keep from burning into the contact tip. But honestly, this doesn't do it as much. And I think it's because um, the, this newer inverter style uh, power supply just has, has a variable inductance and, and runs a little better. Now here, I'm getting a little bit of shorting out, short circuiting there at the start. Um, so my voltage was just a hair low, but I think it's because of my stick out. So I moved in a little closer, and it's just subtle there, but uh, you want a long stick out when you're MIG welding aluminum. But notice there at the start how it's sitting just a little bit more peaked on top versus the second half of the weld after I moved in on my stick out. So we're going to go off on a little tangent here from the review. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to do with it, but let's watch that clip again um, because this is a good, good opportunity to take a look at making sure your technique is good, right? It's short-circuiting out there a little bit. Notice here halfway through, I move in just a subtle amount closer, and then it's running much better. So let's take a look at how this is structurally. See here on the back, you can see um, where I was getting good heat and penetration in through there. It's starting to melt through on the back and the bottom. You're seeing those heat indications there, um, where on the first half of the weld, you don't see any of that. So it makes me question. Um, how structurally sound it is and it's good to dial in your settings and your technique by doing some amount of test and this is a good test to do on a fillet weld where you just clamp it in a vise and bend it open and notice how i just welded one side and i'm bending the root open and this is a much better test than if i were to bend it the other way it would probably hold up about no matter what you had it'd have to be really bad to break the other way but anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it, and the idea is to bend these all the way over to each other, and you know, if you don't get all the way there, you still get a pretty good idea of what's going on. So, um, I, I'm bending this open here just to see, see how it's holding up, and we'll take a look at uh, what happened. So you can see that first half where it just ripped right open on the second half is welded solid. So you can see it wasn't fused very well on the bottom there in the first half. And so I know that I needed to correct that with my technique. So I'll run another weld here. And once I get established, it's run on both sides of the plate. Um, I'll just follow that puddle along. You notice it's still a pretty good length stick out. It's probably 5 eighths of an inch to 3 quarters. It's zoomed in pretty far there. Had a little bit of a slip there, but that's okay. We're, we're running along um, pretty good and getting that nice result like the second half of that uh, first weld. So I'll go ahead and just bend this one open and see if it goes a little bit better uh, than the first one. And, and this is this is not a bad idea to do, both testing your settings and that you've got your technique figured out. And you can see that um, I uh, it didn't open up at all. Now I ran two more welds, so we'll just take a look at both of those on this 1 8 inch. I ran both sides of this, and they came out looking pretty good, and they're in there nice and tight. So I think we have a process, and and technique dialed in that works. So back to the review here, the machine's actually running really well and this hasn't been cleaned at all. So aluminum welds will often have a ton of soot on them, right? If you don't have good shielding, we're getting awesome shielding on this gun. So that's a big perk for this uh, this tool here. So um, on this thin sheet metal, I just set it to the recommended settings. You can see I'm not getting into that spray transfer that I need. I'll watch it one more time. And you can see it's balling up on the wire there. And so that, that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. I did some experiments and ended up with some settings that gave me a pretty good result, but it wasn't in a nice spray transfer like I was hoping for. It's kind of shorting out just a little bit like you can see here, but I'm still getting a reasonable result. I think if I put in smaller diameter, 30 thousandths of an inch wire, I could get the result that I want uh, with spray transfer on this thinner material. Um, but it's, it's nothing reflecting poorly on the mechanics of the, the spool gun. It's just the, the system isn't able to handle it with that larger wire. And honestly, it's, it's too big a wire to run this thin material uh, on aluminum anyway. Um, but I got a pretty reasonable result anyway. And I think uh, a little more knob turning could get a little better with this. And that smaller wire would help quite a bit. But either way, it's still, still not too bad a result. Now I'm cranking this thing way up and I'm going to try running some quarter inch plate which is beyond the recommendation for this uh, welder. So I, I cranked it up to the next uh, lower settings and I'm going to preheat this. Now my propane torch is having some kind of a problem and tools that don't work are the most frustrating thing. But anyway, uh, I, I don't know if they're, one of the airports is plugged but it's, it's getting a bunch of soot on there. But I'll wipe it off and just run it since it's test plates. I wouldn't do that on an actual part. I'll have to fix that later. But you can see it's running pretty well here. Actually, I'm um, just trying to preheat to about 200 degrees, not too hot there. 
uh, to be able to affect the, the microstructure of the metal. But um, anyway, take a look at that result. That is not bad for welding on quarter inch thick plate with this uh, spool gun machine. So I'll run the other side while it's set up. You know, might as well. It's there. And once again, it's running pretty good. So I'm using that 5 8 to 3 quarter inch stick out just push angle to keep gas flowing up ahead of me. It's shielding really nice. This is no cleaning. There's almost no soot there on the weld, a little bit outside of the weld zone of that uh, black deposit, but real nice. All right, well, there you have it. We put this thing through its paces. So let me tell you some of the things that I liked and didn't like uh, at the end of the day. So let's start off with what I like. The first thing that's really noteworthy is how good the gas coverage is on this. I mean, it kept the welds nice and clean. I was using a nice push angle in there. Uh, and a good uh, stick out on it, but uh, it was able to maintain a clean weld and not all of these spool guns can do that. So big thumbs up on that. It was nice and controllable. I thought the ergonomics were pretty good. It felt pretty good to handle, at least as far as spool guns go. They're a little more clunky anyway. The main um, limitation we had trying to weld that thinner material really came down to the wire size we were using. I mean, it'd be interesting to try it with some smaller wire in the future and see if we can't get that dialed in a little bit better. Um, I, I really think you could. Well, now the main thing that uh, I'd say you got to look out for on this is just um, overall, you know, I don't think it's going to take many falls, right? So you got to be careful with it that you're not dropping the thing with the case. And I have a Miller spool uh, gun as well that's similar construction, and, and I'd say the same thing about that. So it's not unique to this that this is really poorly made. I actually think the fit and finish seems pretty good. Um, other than that, I, I don't really have a, a whole lot to complain about this thing for a spool gun that costs, what, 160 bucks. Worked pretty good, so. And don't forget to check out the videos down below where I'll teach you how to MIG weld aluminum as well as other MIG basics, and we'll see you next time.